In this video, I wanna show you how I create tools in After Effects. Now, it's not gonna be a very technical tutorial. I'm not gonna show you how to code or anything like that, but I just wanna show you the workflow, the steps it takes to create the tools and the tools I use and things of that nature. So the app that I create tools for is After Effects. And really, my tools are just a simple text file. That's all they are. We call them scripts, but it's just a simple text file that you essentially bring in into After Effects and then After Effects does something with it and then gives you the outcome that you want. But we always start with a text file. We bring that into After Effects. After Effects knows what to do. It goes through all the steps that you coded in here and then essentially it returns this outcome, whatever outcome you're after, that's what it's going to give you. Now, obviously, there's more to that than just this. Sometimes you want After Effects to just basically run it, do all the stuff that it needs. But there are times when you want user to choose which actions to take. And that's why we built this script UI. So it's the same concept. It's still stored inside of this text file. You bring it into After Effects. Then After Effects says, oh, wait a minute. Hey, user. And it'll pop this in. It says, hey, what do you want to do with this? And then you'll push on buttons and do whatever you want to do and then hit apply. Once you do, it'll take that action and it'll give you the outcome that you want. So two different ways. You can just run it as is or you can give user some options. So you do have to create this that essentially is stored again in just a simple text file. So this visual thing is just a bunch of numbers and they're stored in here. All right. So that's one thing. Now, now you're probably wondering like, hey, how in the heck do we create this text file? So I know it's a text file, but how do we create it? Now you can create it in just about any text editing tools out there. You can use uh, Notepad, Word, but there are tools that are designed for this kind of stuff. And they do have a bunch of them. A lot of them are free. And this one, Visual Studio Code is the one that I like. It's totally free and it's really, really awesome. I love it. And essentially it's the tool that we use to create this text file. Think of it like Microsoft Word. You create a text file, right? That's what it does. So it's the same thing just for coding. That's all that is. Don't overcomplicate it. So that's the tool. Okay, well then I have to think about like, well, how do I create this? And uh, you know, there are times when I create pseudo effects. So let me kind of go into After Effects real quick. So here is After Effects. And when we create the tool, like the text file, you can either go to file and then go to scripts and then run script file this way, just point to it and run it and it'll do what it needs to do. Or you can put it in a certain folder and then it'll be shown right here. Like this tool right here was shown in there. So that's the tool that has options, right? And the way it works is very simple. Then the user has options. You, you can say, oh, okay, I'm gonna like bring in this setting right here. I'm gonna make sure markers are driving the duration. Okay, you can go through options in here, see what you want. So I've created all of this and then you select the text there that you want to apply the animation, you run it. It'll do what it needs to do, it'll create the markers. And before you know it, it has text animation that you can adjust, right, with the markers. So that's cool. But then I also created a pseudo effect. So it's this thing right here that is automatically attached to the layer. You can get rid of this and this one will still be here. And so basically user can adjust stuff in here. Hey, instead of marker, I want to do time. So now I can adjust duration with time. So they have more options that are created for them to kind of work off of. So how do we create that? So we talked about the menu, the script UI. And we also talked about pseudo effect, which is applied after you run the script. And then obviously the code itself to kind of runs everything, right? To create this and that. So all three of them are kind of processed through this text editor and then is stored inside of here. So this has to be a number or it has to be text. That has to be text. And yeah, and you kind of combine them together to achieve this. So let me kind of quickly show you like a diagram. So this has to go through here. And we're gonna do the same thing for that. So that has to go through there and this one. So we can visually kind of see what needs to be accomplished here. So boom, we're good. Now let's talk about the script UI. How do we create this? And used to, I would just do it by, by hand. I would have to go into something like Visual Studio Code and like code it in. I have to know what to code in. And it took some time because it's not visual. You kind of have to code it in, you assume kind of what it would look like but there's a better tool that's totally free and i've been using it for years ever since i learned about it i never looked back to this and it's this website right here scriptui.jonas.me and this thing will save you so much time so let me kind of attach it to this thing real quick 
So that's what this thing does. It basically creates this. So this is what it looks like. It's totally free. I'll include the link to it at the bottom of this video, but essentially you have like a visual buttons in here. So that's like a blank canvas that you start with. And then you can say, hey, I want a new group. You can put some stuff in there, all of these buttons, and you can kind of quickly see what it's creating. And you can see that we have outline right here. We can change the name of the group in here. We can keep moving stuff around visually. So we don't have to code any of this stuff. We just visually create our menu and you can adjust all these settings, very useful. You can create another group, put more stuff in there, maybe tell it to be a column instead of a row. Boom, you get the gist. So eventually you create what you want. You can import images, do whatever you want. And then once you're done, you just go to export and it'll convert all that visual stuff into code, which is super helpful. And then you just uh, make more adjustments in the settings. You can say, hey, I want it to be a dockable panel in After Effects. So you might want to check this so you can store it in different panels. And then you would just copy the code. So you copy it, it copies it, and then you take this code and you bring it into Visual Studio Code. Now, what about Pseudo Effect? Pseudo Effect is a different tool, but this one is not free. And this one is called Pseudo Effect Maker. And this one is also something that I absolutely love. I use it all the time, not just for scripts, but also for Mogerts. It's a very useful tool, uh, but it's not free. So let me show you, it's this one right here. It's only $18. It's the best $18 you've spent in your life. And this thing gives you all kinds of controls. In fact, I do have it. It's this right here. It's the same concept. You bring in all the tools you want, you know, all of that stuff in here. You can make groups. You can put things in, like a menu inside of a group. You can tell whatever options you want to give there. As you can see, there it is. And then you can select the layer and you can pop it in. So plus, boom, just like that, it's in here. Now you have all these options. Anyway, very useful, but obviously you have to convert this into a binary value so you can bring it to a VS code. But again, it's a good start. I definitely recommend you getting this. The last thing I wanna to add to my workflow is Adobe Illustrator because this is what I use to create all of these icons. And basically I just export uh, my icons as raster images out of Illustrator into the script UI.jonas.me and in here where I assemble my UI. And let me show you what that looks like in Illustrator. As you can see, this is my setup. You can see all of my icons in here and it's something I just created over time. And eventually you wanna mock up what the UI might look like. And so this is my attempt. As you can see, I kinda of wanna visually see where I want the eye to go. So since everything's black, the lighter object is where the eye goes. So I wanna make sure people go to the top bar first. This is where you apply or delete Smart Animator. Then the second one would be tab. So you wanna pick a tab you want. Whatever you click on, you'll see it in the label here. That's something I just added. So anyway, you kinda of work through stuff in here and then you make it operational. Now it looks like this. So as you can see, we have tabs, it labels it. We have the buttons in here and these are bigger. So, and again, that's something you figure out as you design it in Illustrator. You kind of see like, hey, maybe I need to make the button bigger so the attention goes there. But the end result is always so fun. Like I love creating a tool because once it works, it's such a cool feeling. I, I just love it. Whether you like it or not, but your tool will never be finished. I just want to make sure you hear me correctly. It will never be finished. It will always be in beta. And I hate to say it, but that's just the painful truth because even though you work on it, you create all the features you want and you release it thinking, you know, you tested everything, which you probably have. But as soon as you release it, someone will play with it and they'll use it in the way that you didn't intend it to. And all of a sudden they'll break it and you'll get that painful feedback. And I just want to say that feedback is gold. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Just make it better. There's a lot of times when you create a tool, you're thinking that every single feature is going to be used. Like you're thinking 100% of my features are used every single day. And that's not really the case. Usually it's only 20% of features that people use. So you want to find that 20% and get rid of that 80. Because if think about this, if you're working on 80% of the features that no one's using, why are you spending the time working on those? So that's why it's so important that you listen to your feedback. You listen to what they're saying and you figure out that 20% and work on those features, make them better. And that's how you create a value-driven tool. And so the reason why I mentioned that because you wanna have a system to where you collect all your feedback. And I use Notion.so, and by the way, I'll include that in the link 
uh, in the description below and basically this thing allows me to kind of dump everything if i'm reading an email like i don't always code sometimes i do motion design work i'll have an email uh that someone is having an issue or someone wants a certain feature and so instantly i'll go to smart animator and i'll add it to my to do and then when i have the time to code i'll move it to in progress i'll work on it and then when i finish it I just put it in the current version that I'm at. So here's an example. Someone asked for a feature to where they want to control the duration of Smart Animator with layer markers. And I thought that was a great, great feature. So I'm like, all right. And immediately I went to my Notion here. I added it in and actually I have already completed it here. So it's in here. So I just want to show you that you don't want to carry all that stuff in your head. You want to have a system where you can quickly dump it in there and basically kind of organize stuff. And in fact, let me show you what that feature looks like. If you go to After Effects, and this is Smart Animator, let me move myself here. So this is the text, nothing is happening. So I'm going to bring in this preset and uh, I'm going to set it to marker. Hit apply. And so instantly we have markers in and out. Now this will change probably. I'm still working on it. So as you can see, it animates in. I can adjust it with markers. And that's what that person wanted. So I'm like, that's a great feature. And uh, and it was all because the person who is actually using my tool, that's what they wanted. And instead of me spending the time working on the 80% that no one's using, I'm working on this.